you know, when it comes to the actor Patrick Swayze, there's two movies that come to mind, which is Dirty Dancing and Ghost. Ghost was one of my favorite movies as a kid growing up. I used to watch that movie all the time. But Patrick Swayze was the man in the late 80s and early 90s. Even though, you know, he never received an Oscar or anything. He was nominated for three Golden Globe Awards. But he still was a great actor. And one of the greatest dancers of all time to me. And just like every other celebrity, he had demons. He had a lot of demons he had to face. And uh, the way he died, though, with that pancreatic cancer is crazy. So let's let's get right into the story, though, right? Now, Patrick Swayze was born on August 18th, 1952 in Houston, Texas. He was the second born from his parents. And, you know, his mother, Patsy Swayze, she was a famous dancer, choreographer and a dance instructor. And his father, Jesse Wayne Swayze, was an engineer for an oil company. And, you know, his brother, Don Swayze, will become a well accomplished actor later on, too. Now, growing up, you know, his mother opened up a dance school in Houston, Texas, and Patrick and his siblings used to be with their mother all day at that dance school. That's where all the dancing he do in the movies come from, that dance school. He learned in that dance school. His mother, Patsy, would later on be the dance instructor and movie choreographer for the movies Big Top Pee Wee, Urban Cowboy, and many more. And she taught some students that would become famous. She taught Tommy Toon, Debbie Allen went to that school, Randy Quaid. Now, by the time Patrick was three years old, he started doing ballet and learning how to dance at his mother's school. And he also would learn how to perform and act as a child because when companies needed children to perform for their productions, they would come to his mother's dance school to find child actors and dancers. But, you know, like every other child growing up, he was into everything. Football, baseball, skating, swimming, running track, a bunch of other things. He also would lead the school plays. He played instruments. He played the violin. And he sang in the school choir. But his real passion at that time was ballet dancing. And as he got older and into high school, some of the kids would make fun of him. You know, they try to tease him because he did ballet. Like one time there was about five boys who used to tease him all the time and they ended up beating him up and jumping him. And Patrick's dad came up to the school and had the principal pull all five of them boys out of class and let Patrick fight him one on one. And he beat him up one by one, too, because Patrick also took martial arts. He was good in Taekwondo. And, you know, his mother his mother, Patsy, was the one that told him to beat them boys up if they bother him. His mother didn't play. She was very strict. And sometimes she can be violent against him. She was abusing Patrick. It got to the point that Patrick's father threatened to divorce her because of the abuse Patrick would receive from her. Wow. And you know, once the father, once he jumped on her, she never abused Patrick again. And, you know, Patrick said, though, she was just pushing him to be better. That's all she was doing, just pushing him to be better because she came from an abusive parents, which was 10 times worse than that. But like I said earlier, he also loved playing sports. He had kind of put the ballet dancing to the side to play football. But an injury to his leg his senior year shattered that dream. He had to have reconstructed surgery. So... After that happened, he ended up getting a gymnastic scholarship to San Jacinto College. But then he dropped out of college because he got an opportunity to tour as Prince Charming in Disney on Parade, in which his mother wasn't too happy about. But he did continue to take dance lessons, though. And around 1972, he ended up moving to New York to attend dance training at the Harkness Ballet and Joffrey Ballet Schools. But this was also around the time that he would meet his future wife, Lisa Niemi, 
who also studied at his mother's school. So once he got to New York, he ended up landing a job as a dancer at Elliott Fell Ballet Company. But then something happened to him that would end his ballet career and all those years of training for ballet. So what happened was he had, had a tooth that had abscess and it had got infected and into his bloodstream and it traveled down to his leg that he had surgery on from that football injury in high school. And it got so bad that the doctors wanted to amputate his leg. Wow. But they ended up saving the leg. But the bad news was his ballet career was over. So once that happened, that's when he started focusing on music theater and acting on Broadway. And he landed some parts in the Broadway play called Good Time Charlie, Chicago, and he was in a West Side Story. Now, in 1978, he auditioned and won the part of Danny Zuko in the Broadway play Grease, which had previously been played by John Travolta. Him and John Travolta were good friends, and Patrick actually showed him how to dance. But also around that time, he started taking acting classes at Warren Robertson's theater workshop in New York, where Robert De Niro and James Earl Jones had also studied. After that, he ended up leaving New York and he headed to Los Angeles to make it in Hollywood as an actor. And in 1979, he made his first movie debut in a movie called Skate Town, USA, which was about roller skating in the disco era. You know, that movie, um, legendary comedian Flip Wilson was in it, and actress Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady in the Brady Bunch movie, was also in it. And according to uh, Maureen McCormick, she said in an interview that on the set of that movie, there was a lot of cocaine being done on the set. And she fell back into severe cocaine addiction during the production, often showing up late for shooting and not coming to work at all. That was the late disco era, y'all. You know how they got down. That movie, Skate Town USA, didn't do big numbers in the box office, but the media loved Patrick's performance in that movie and thought he was good, which put a lot of eyes on him. The following year, he appeared in his first TV movie called The Comeback Kid with John Ritter and Kim Fields. That's Tootie from the show called The Facts of Life. 1981, he appeared in his first TV show, which was an episode on MASH. He was a leukemia patient on that episode. In 1983, he did six episodes on the ABC show called The Renegades. But then, while working there, that's when his father ended up dying from a heart attack while he was hiking with their dogs. And Patrick was devastated after losing his father. And that's when the drinking started for him as he fell into a deep depression. He would become a bad alcoholic after that, y'all. And, you know, he started getting into a lot of fights at the bars, started driving his car dangerously, 90 to 100 miles per hour on the highway, doing all kinds of wild stuff. He was just trying to drink that pain away. He was feeling after losing his father, which was his idol. But, you know, that same year, in 1983, he landed a role in another one of my favorite movies, which was called The Outsiders. That's my movie right there, The Outsiders. Everybody was in that movie too. Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Matt Dillon, Tom Cruise, uh, Ralph Macchio, and many more. Also, that same year in 1983, he played in a movie called Uncommon Valor with Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman was a good actor too. In 1984, he played in a movie called Red Dawn with Charlie Sheen and Jennifer Grey. In 1985, he appeared in 12 episodes on a miniseries called North and South, which was on the ABC network. And Patrick said in an interview, right, while working on that set, one time they was wearing the war uniforms for like 18 hours during the South Carolina summer. It was so hot that he fainted. And he ended up hitting his face on the cement column and end up breaking his nose. Wow. Patrick said he done broke just about every bone in his body throughout his career. 
But then in 1987, he would do a role that would change his life forever. And that movie is called Dirty Dancing. Now, the crazy thing about that movie is, in real life, Patrick and Jennifer Grey, who played Baby, they really didn't get along. At first, they didn't get along. They was arguing and fighting while making a movie because they had done a movie before, Red Dawn, together, right? And Jennifer Grey said Patrick was part of a group who pranked her by setting off firecrackers at her door when she was trying to sleep. And she never forgot that. So when she saw him on the set of Dirty Dancing, she wasn't too happy. But when they got into the groove, started dancing, they started to vibe and click. And another thing about Patrick is he was a daredevil. He liked to do his own stunts. Y'all remember that part on Dirty Dancing when he was uh, dancing on that fallen tree across the creek trying to keep their balance and everything? Well... Patrick fell a bunch of times and ended up messing up his knee again. When he was practicing that part, another part is when he was practicing that part, when she had to run, he had to lift her up. He messed up his knee again on that part. <laughs> but, you know, he did a great job of acting in that movie, though. Great movie, man. And he was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Lead Actor in a Motion Picture. But he lost to Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam. And look, the budget to make that movie Dirty Dancing was only $4.5 million. And the movie made over $214 million in the box office. Wow. That's crazy. When he did that movie, they said the females loved that movie so much that they went to see it in the theater over 50 times. Wow. Crazy, man. The women went crazy for him, man. And that's when all the rumors started coming out that he was cheating on his wife, Lisa, and everything. And look, you can't forget that soundtrack to the movie. The soundtrack to Dirty Dancing sold over 32 million copies worldwide and is one of the best-selling albums of all time. Wow. That Dirty Dancing soundtrack spent 18 weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 chart and has been certified 14 times platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, the RIAA. And look, the song that Patrick wrote, he was a musician too, he wrote songs. The song he wrote for that soundtrack in the movie, She's Like the Wind, that hit number one on the adult contemporary chart and number three on the US Billboard Hot 100 chart and was certified gold. And that launched his music career. People don't know Patrick had a music career too. The song called I Had the Time of My Life hit number one on the adult contemporary for four weeks and won the Academy Award for Best Original Song. And it won a Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song. And it won a Grammy Award for Best Pop Performance by a duo or group with vocals. It also won an ASCAP Award for Most Performed Song for motion pictures and the writers of the song won an ASCAP award for the song writer of the year man that soundtrack was dope man and guess and look I had the time of my life that song was sent to this person first but they turned it down it was Donna Summer the disco queen wow she turned that song down Daryl Hall of Hall and Oates also turned the song down too you know, there was something that Patrick hated about Dirty Dancing. And that was the title of the movie, Dirty Dancing. He didn't like the name for some reason, Dirty Dancing. And you know what else is crazy? They had offered him $10 million for the sequel. He turned it down. Wow. But you know, years later, he said he regret not doing a sequel and taking the money. But Dirty Dancing, man... That movie took him to another level and made him a sex symbol. But here's the thing, though. Patrick didn't want to be known as just a dancing guy and a sex symbol. He wanted to do a role that showed off his fighting skills and being the tough guy. So when the next role came around, he wanted to show off his fighting and being tough. So after uh, Dirty Dancing, 
he was offered to play Riggs for the movie Lethal Weapon, but he turned it down. And Mel Gibson went in, did it, became a star after that. In 1989, he played in a movie called Roadhouse, in which I thought was a great movie. I love Roadhouse. It wasn't a bad movie, in my opinion. But a lot of critics didn't like it. You know, he played a bouncer named Dalton. And, you know, in that movie, Roadhouse, they were fighting for real, y'all. Throwing real punches and kicks and everything, which left Patrick covered with bruises. Two broken ribs and a busted knee again. Wow. That knee, man. And look, the injuries from that movie Roadhouse made him turn down the leading roles for the movies Tango and Cash and Predator 2. That's crazy. So he was supposed to be in Tango and Cash and Predator 2. Wow. But, like I said, also around that time, his drinking, alcohol was still out of control at that time and since he did the roadhouse movie everybody was just trying to test him and fight him everywhere he went to the bar or whatever they wanted to fight him so that's when he decided to play a role a little bit more softer for the next go around and in 1990 he played in another one of my favorite movies which was called ghost with whoopi goldberg I love that movie Ghost. That's my movie right there, man. You know, the crazy part is they didn't want him for that role until he nailed the audition and had everybody in the audition and staff members all crying on the set. The reason why the director of that movie Ghost didn't want Patrick at first for the role was because he had just played a tough guy in the movie Roll House and the movie Ghost was more romantic. They didn't think he can pull it off. Plus, the role was supposed to be Bruce Willis's role anyway. Bruce Willis was supposed to play that role. And he was married to Demi Moore at that time. But he turned the role down. Bruce Willis said he just didn't see the vision of the movie. And he regrets not taking the role now. Now, the director also of that movie, Ghost, didn't want Whoopi Goldberg for the role she played but it was Patrick that told the director if they didn't cast Whoopi Goldberg he wasn't going to do the movie him and Whoopi became good friends too Whoopi got that movie because Patrick said it's a package deal with him and her wow that's crazy now look when it comes to ghosts the budget was 23 million to make it but the movie grossed over 505 million dollars in the box office wow that's crazy that's why bruce willis said he regrets not taking it and and whippy got a whippy ended up winning the uh, oscar for best supporting actress and a golden globe award for best supporting actress motion picture and patrick was nominated for his second golden globe award for best lead actor in a motion picture ghost was a that was a great movie i'm gonna have to watch that again this week now, in 1991, he played in a movie titled Point Break with Keanu Reeves and Gary Boosie. And that same year, People Magazine named him the sexiest man alive that year. I told y'all the women used to love some Patrick Swayze. In 1992, he starred in a movie called City of Joy, where he plays an American doctor in Calcutta. And it was kind of dangerous making that movie over there. He said they had protesters charging at them because they felt that the movie exploits the poverty of Calcutta. It got so bad that at one point, they was throwing firebombs over the wall on the set, but nobody was hurt though. And you know what? Patrick had actually quit drinking. He stopped drinking alcohol while making that movie. But when the movie was a flop and didn't do good in the box office, he went right back to drinking again. Now, in 1993, he appeared in a movie titled Fatherhood with Holly Berry. And that same year, he checked himself into rehab for his drinking, which was still getting worse and worse. Apparently, while filming that movie Fatherhood, 
he kept passing out while filming the scene in the back of the car. They had trouble waking him up because he was so drunk. Now, in 1994, Patrick and his wife Lisa danced together on the stage at the World Music Awards to Whitney Houston's song called All The Man I Need. And then when you thought things couldn't get worse for him, his older sister, Vicky Lynn Swayze, committed suicide after years of dealing with manic depression. She was 45 years old. Rest in peace to her. Mental illness is a serious problem in America, y'all. That mental illness is something else. Now, in 1995, he landed a role in a movie called Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, with Wesley Snipes and John Leguizamo. They played three New York City drag queens, and Patrick was nominated for his third Golden Globe Award for Best Lead Actor in a Motion Picture, but he lost to John Travolta that year in the movie uh, Get Shorty. Now, when it comes to Tu Wong Fu, <laughs> In an interview, right, Patrick said he wanted to do he wanted to do the movie Tu Wong Fu to show Hollywood he can play any character. Because at first, they didn't even let him read the script because they felt he was too macho for that role. But after he auditioned, he said he had everybody in tears. And he modeled that character after his mom and actress Demi Moore. But he also said his mother didn't approve of his decision to appear in drag. But you know, for the most part, Patrick, Wesley, and John Leguizamo said that they did the movie because they wanted to be looked at in Hollywood as a person who could play any character. Now, here's something interesting, right? Patrick did say that when the movie was over, he saw Wesley Snipes do some kind of ritual by burning all the drag clothes he wore and he worshipped it and said he would never do that kind of role again. Hmm. Wow. In 1997, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but also that same year, he entered rehab for alcoholism again. In 1998, he played in a movie called Black Dog, which is about an ex-con truck driver who is tricked into transporting illegal arms. I had watched that movie not too long ago, too. But he also was in a movie called Letters from a Killer, and he said while filming that movie, he fell off a horse and hit a tree and had to be airlifted to a hospital because he broke his leg and he suffered four detached tendons in his shoulder. Wow. He done messed up that leg again. Ever since high school, that leg been getting messed up. He done messed up that leg the third, fourth, fifth time already. Now, in 2000, some crazy mess happened when he was flying his private plane and he escaped death. He almost died. Now, the story goes with that incident. He was flying his private plane in Arizona when all of a sudden it malfunctioned and he had to make an emergency landing on a road in a housing development under construction near Prescott Valley, Arizona. Now, the right wing of the plane struck a street light, a stop sign, an electrical utility box and another street light now the crazy part is there were three construction workers there that witnessed the whole thing and they lied to the police when they arrived because the police found 10 empty bottles of beer on the plane but they didn't know where patrick was the construction workers said that patrick thumbed the ride and left so when they got in contact with Patrick, when the police got in contact with Patrick and asked him was he intoxicated flying that plane, he said no. But then the three witnesses, the construction workers, changed their story and told police that Patrick was drunk and they helped him carry a half-empty box 30 pack of beer and a half-empty bottle of wine from the plane. Then they told the police that they took Patrick to one of the guy's houses. They took him out to eat, and then they put him in a hotel. But Patrick was never charged because they couldn't prove that he was flying a plane. Wow, I can't believe he didn't get arrested for that. He got away with that. But here's the thing that caused the plane to malfunction. 
Now see, Patrick was a heavy smoker. He smoked three packs of cigarettes a day and all that smoking he did in the cockpit he had did on the plane had caused a sticky residue on the outflow valve which made him pass out on the plane because he wasn't getting no oxygen. Wow. He lost consciousness and passed out while the plane was in the air. And before he passed out, he had put the plane on autopilot. But somehow, through the grace of God, he woke up after being passed out and he landed the plane. That's crazy. He was passed out the whole time and then all of a sudden he just woke up and landed the plane. But at the end of the day, he was never charged because he had disappeared from the scene for about 12 hours, which is the minimum time required to obtain a toxicology sample. It had expired and he was never subjected to a breathalyzer. How is that possible? He beat this flying that plane drunk and he still beat it. But look, here's the crazy part. The three construction workers were arrested for making false statements to the cops when first interviewed about the accident. Each of the men pleaded to a single misdemeanor count. Wow, so the three construction workers were arrested. Patrick was never arrested for crashing that plane and everything. That's crazy, man. Now, in 2001, he played in a movie called Green Dragon alongside Forrest Whitaker. And that same year, he also played in Donnie Darko. In 2003, he and his wife did a movie together called One Last Dance. His wife, Lisa, actually wrote and directed that movie. And it was based on their experiences as struggling dancers growing up. But that was the time also she left him, though. His wife, Lisa, ended up leaving him because of his alcohol problem. She, was, she got so fed up with all that alcohol and stuff he was doing. One morning, while he was asleep, she just left him and moved into an apartment 20 minutes away from their California ranch. Now, in 2004, they did another Dirty Dancing movie called Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. And Patrick appeared as a dance instructor in that movie. In 2006, he went back to doing plays. And he starred in a Broadway play called Guys and Dolls. But that same year in 2006, he went back into rehab again for his drinking. And he even went to see a psychic for help because his wife had moved out out of the house. But like I said, when she left him, that's when he finally gave up drinking, though. He gave up the drinking and they ended up getting back together. But then in 2007, Patrick started to notice that his body just wasn't right. While filming on the set of the TV show called The Beast, he started to feel a burning sensation in the stomach. And then he started having a lot of digestive issues. Then he said one time they were celebrating New Year's Eve and he felt that something was wrong because he tried to drink some champagne. And it felt like pouring acid on an open wound. Ouch. He started having indigestion problems, issues and stuff. And he started to notice he was getting skinnier. He was getting skinny. He had dropped about 20 pounds in the blink of an eye, he said. And he just knew that something was wrong. He also had some pain that wouldn't go away. And he noticed that his eyes were real yellow. And that's when he decided to go to the doctor. And, you know, the doctors ran some tests on him and... That's when the doctors told him he had stage four pancreatic cancer that had spread to his liver. Mm, 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 mm. And when the doctors told him that, that's when he looked at his wife, Lisa, and told her he was a dead man. Wow. That's sad right there. And you know, the doctors told him he can go ahead and treat it and be as aggressive as he want, but he need to think about getting his affairs in order sooner rather than later because that pancreatic cancer is one of the worst forms and will take you out in no time with that kind of cancer you have a very low survival rate just one percent of those diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer might live no longer than five years according to johns hopkins so 
all that drinking and smoking finally caught up with him. And like I said earlier, he smoked for 40 years and chain smoked about 60 cigarettes a day at the height of his habit. Wow. And, you know, Patrick said he believed that his habit probably has something to do with his cancer. But, you know, him and his wife just had positive thinking and were just praying for a miracle. And he went public and told the world that he has been going through hell with his battle with pancreatic cancer. He said there's a lot of fear there. There's a lot of stuff going on. He's scared. He's angry. He's asking why. But, you know, it's been plenty of days that he would just cry in private to his wife and say he wanted to live. But he still continued to work and he was still doing a TV show called The Beast while fighting the cancer. And he would work 14 to 16 hour days and get chemotherapy on the weekends. But here's the sad part. He continued to smoke cigarettes while undergoing treatment for his cancer. Wow. And on September 14th, 2009, Patrick Swayze died from pancreatic cancer at his home just 20 months after being diagnosed. You know, during his final weeks alive, the hospital admitted him for what was his impending death. But his family brought him home to pass away in his own bed on his horse ranch. His wife, Lisa, said her last words to Patrick were, I love you. And those were his last words to her. And he died right in her arms. Sad, man. You know, his body was cremated and his ashes were scattered over his New Mexico ranch. You know him and his wife Lisa had started writing a book before he passed too. The book was called The Time of My Life, which was published 2010. In 2014, his wife Lisa got remarried. She married a jeweler and lives on a horse ranch in Florida. She was married to Patrick for 34 years and they had no children, but she had suffered one miscarriage, she said. In 2019, she put out a documentary called I Am Patrick Swayze, which was released on his birthday. So make sure y'all check that out when y'all get a chance. But Patrick Swayze was a good actor, though, man. He was a great actor. One of the best to ever do it. He would truly be missed. Truly be missed. He was 57 years old. Rest in peace. Patrick Swayze.